This lecture is about the speed of sound and how it relates to the pressure, density and temperature in a gas. To find a relation for the speed of sound A, we use a one-dimensional model of a moving sound wave into a stagnant gas seen from a static observer. The wave moves with the speed A. In front of the wave, we have the properties of the gas, the static pressure P, the density rho, and the temperature T. Behind the wave, these properties have changed into P plus delta P, rho plus delta rho, and T plus delta T. Equal to this is a situation where the observer is moving with the wave, so the wave is motionless, and the gas is flowing by with speed A. Still, on the left-hand side, we see the undisturbed pressure, density, and temperature, and on the downstream side of the wave, we find the changed properties. Note that also the speed has changed into A plus dA. If we now apply the continuity equation for compressible flow to this situation, we find rho AV is constant. With the properties shown in the picture, this transforms into rho times A1 times A is rho plus d rho times A2 times A plus dA. The model is one-dimensional, which in practice means that the area doesn't change going from 1 to 2. This leaves us with this relation for rho times A. Resolving the part between brackets gives us this expression. Rho times A is on both sides, so this disappears. Now, differentials are infinitesimally small, so the product of two differentials, such as d rho dA, is so small that it can be neglected. So the application of the continuity equation gives us the expression A is minus rho dA over d rho. Now, in a previous lecture, we derived the Euler equation, remember? So dP is minus rho V dV, and it is also valid for compressible flow. Written in the notation of the present situation, where V is equal to the speed of the sound wave A, we find dP is minus rho A dA. Or, written a little differently, dA is minus dP over rho A. We now have an expression for dA that we can substitute in the equation for A we found earlier from applying the continuity equation. This substitution leads to A squared is dP over d rho. When the gas moves through the sound wave, there is no heat addition and friction is negligibly small, which basically makes this process isentropic. The differentials dP, d rho can be derived from the isentropic relation for pressure and density. This equation can also be written as P over rho to the power gamma is constant. Differentiating this, we find dP over d rho is gamma times P over rho. When we substitute this in the expression for A, we find A is the square root of gamma P over rho. We also have the equation of state of a perfect gas, P over rho is RT. Hence, for the speed of sound, we find the speed of sound, A, is the square root of gamma RT. And this is a nice result. It shows that the speed of sound in a perfect gas only depends on the temperature, T. In aerospace engineering, we often use the ratio of the actual speed over the speed of sound, V over A. It's called the Mach number. It was named after the Austrian physicist Ernst Mach, who was one of the first to study compressibility and the speed of sound in great detail. However, during Mach's lifetime, the name, the name Mach number was unknown. It was only after his death in 1916 that an influential aeronautical engineer called Jacob Ackerat, during a conference in 1929, to honor Mach, proposed to give the ratio V over A the present name. And so it happened. Flight can be roughly classified into five categories. M smaller than 0.8 is called subsonic. M is 1 is called sonic. M around 1 is called transonic. M higher than 1 is called supersonic. And finally, M higher than 5 is called hypersonic. Compressible flow often involves flow from a reservoir or 
such as in the stagnation point on the leading edge of a wing, a flow where at some point the velocity is zero. For this type of flow, the isentropic relations can be made much easier and, and directly related to the Mach number. Suppose we have a reservoir at station zero, and at the exit of this channel we have station one. Let's look at the energy equation for this flow. So, CPT1 plus a half V1 squared is CPT0 plus a half V0 squared. Now, in the reservoir, the velocity is zero, so the V0 disappears, which leaves us with CPT1 plus a half V1 squared is CPT0. Or, if we write it differently, T0 over T1 is 1 plus V1 squared divided by 2 Cp T1. Now we would like to relate these temperatures to the Mach number. So we have to rewrite this. Let's first look at the formulation for Cp. Earlier we found the enthalpy H is E plus P times V and from the derivations using a constant pressure and the constant volume process we also found H is Cp times T and E is Cv times T. We also have the equation for a perfect gas. B times V is RT. Now when we combine these equations, it follows CPT is CVT plus RT. There's a T on both sides, so CP is CV plus R. Or if you write it differently, CP minus CV is R. We also defined gamma is Cp over Cv, so Cv is Cb divided by gamma. And if we combine these two, then it follows that Cp is gamma r divided by gamma minus 1. So now we have an expression for Cp in terms of gamma and r. Now let's go back to the energy equation. T0 over T1 is 1 plus V1 squared over 2 times Cp T1. When we replace Cp by the expression we just found, it follows that T0 over T1 is 1 plus gamma minus 1 divided by 2 times V1 squared divided by gamma R T1. Now, maybe you recognize that here we have A1 squared. So, basically, what we found is that T0 over T1 is 1 plus gamma minus 1 divided by 2 times m1 squared. So now we have related the t's in the flow with the Mach number in the flow. And this is true for the flow from a reservoir, but also if we bring the flow to rest isentropically, for instance in the case of a stagnation point on the wing leading edge. If we now use the isentropic relations, we can also relate other quantities to the Mach number in the flow. This gives these relations that relate temperature, pressure and density to the Mach number. They are also called the second form of the isentropic relations. Now mind you, these expressions are only valid when the velocity is zero in station zero, since that was the assumption at the start of the derivation. This concludes the lecture on the speed of sound. In the next lecture, we will apply this knowledge to supersonic wind tunnels and rocket engines.